All right, in today's video, we're gonna be taking my machine and we're gonna be taking some big block, blah, big block. All right, so today we're gonna be taking my machine and we're gonna be making some riser blocks for this injection mold I'm working on. So we have these big, they are two inch thick by, let's see, six inches wide by 8.3, eight and a quarter and a little bit. So we're taking these, taking two of them and we're coming over here in the orange vise, this big block. We're gonna turn this into this piece right here. Okay, so I just replaced this one in an eighth inch length of cut, half inch end mill. I gotta go to this two inch length of cut because this depth is 1.75. So we're gonna come down like this, go around it and make our part. So this is a pretty expensive end mill. So I try to go conservative on the speeds and feeds, but uh, it works great, honestly. It's not as scary as I thought. So I'm gonna tighten that up. And up one is complete. And this thing is looking nice. Got a nice finish. Not like finish matters on any of this. I have square corners on here. You know, I'm just gonna deburr it by hand. It wouldn't take me that long to add that in on Fusion, but I like having in Fusion square corners to pick up on and reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. Obviously this one part made a huge mess, but I'll show you video of it machining here in a second, but these chips turned out great. And um, that might be the thumbnail for this video actually. Let's get a bigger handful of chips here. That'll be the thumbnail. So yeah, a lot of chips, 50 thou, uh, let's see, width of cut, and then the full 1.75 depth of cut. So works great, 8,000 RPMs, that tool works great. All right, first things first is the face mill. Eighty inches a minute, ten thousand RPMs. Honestly, I could double this. That's two hundred inches a minute. That's normally what I run it at. So that's the face mill. Come in with this two-inch length of cut and make some serious chips now. don't want to keep cooling off too much because that will get very hot and chip well. I'll do it one more time for you guys when it comes around the corner here. Oh yeah. All right, so this takes about four minutes to rough and finish, so I'm gonna skip through this and I'll show you guys the chamfering. Totally forgot to film the chamfering, but 25,000 chamfer and a pile of chips to go with it. So I'm gonna clean out this and probably top off my coolant because I'm getting low and we'll move on to op two on those. Note to self, chip augers on Haas machines are not the greatest, um, especially with long chips like this. Smaller chips, they work great. I mean, obviously I've gotten all those chips out plus more but like these long chips really make a ball right down there and it just screws this thing up. All right, so op two, flipped it over in this vise, got our stop set. All it is, contour to clean up the top hat, face and chamfer, and then it ends up looking like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that right now. So let's go for it. So this part's not as interesting. It's really just an adaptive around the top. You don't, you should try not to um, face when you have like unsupported material. You don't like, that's not good to uh, face. God, I can't talk today. It's not good to face unsupported material with a face mill because the inserts can get damaged. 
so it's good to come in with an end mill first. So I'm gonna come back when we got the face mill. All right, next is the fun tool, the face mill here. So the first cut's not gonna be much. Well, compared to the next one at least. One and a half inch step over. Here we go. It's like popcorn. We'll see it shoot the other way here. I could go faster, but once again, why push it? Just a couple parts. And then the chamfer here. I'll show it to you this time. Come down, I think 60 inches a minute. 25 thou chamfer. Just walks around the corner. I'm not gonna show you the rest, but uh, yeah. All right, so we got these two blocks done. I'm just gonna do a quick edge break on these corners. Just to soften them up a little bit. And then we'll call it good for these. I do still have two more ops on these parts. I have to drill and tap on both ends of these. Some metric threads and then some imperial threads. All right, this is a good teaching point for myself and others. It just went to chamfer, so I'm on the other side. These are for 3 8 by 16 threads, and my hole was modeled as much bigger than the actual 3125 drill size. So it chamfered a much bigger hole and really didn't chamfer the hole at all. So I just made sketches of actually the size of the hole, 3125, and we're gonna go back and rerun that program now, and it should clean that up. So let's go ahead. Do this, copy it over, let's skip to tool 19, and it should clean that kind of weird burr up, or not. Okay, I might actually come in here and counter bore that. Um, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I counter bored it down 100 thou. The chamfer didn't clean it up, obviously, so I'm just gonna come in here. I'm doing this with my non dominant hand. And I'm just gonna add just a little chamfer. I, I'll make it a little bit bigger, but I'll do that. And then we'll come in here with the tap back there and we'll just thread those holes. All right, let's show you the whole process. First up, center drill once again, three holes this time. Coming back with a, I believe it's a 5 16th, 3 one, two, five drill. I actually added the peck this time. And that last little trick I did, I just showed you with the counter bore, that worked. I'll show you that here in a second once these are done. All right, let's go to 100% rapid on these holes could really increase the feed. I'm actually gonna bump that up. 150 feed rate, or 150%, just to clarify, at 1500 RPM. Almost done there. There you can see the rapids of the machine, kind of crazy. Turn it back down to 50%. And then I just want to check that that left a nice chamfer. It did. So let's go ahead and do those last holes here. Once again, 3 8 by 16. that's done and this is what it looks like this was the one that I had to fix 
with those kind of funky counter bores, but it works great. The threads are perfect. Like so. And uh, these are officially done. So these are the mold spacers and we'll have one mold sit here, the back plate here, the ejector system will be in between. And uh, pretty happy with this. And uh, yeah. So that's gonna be it for this video. Wow, that's bad lighting, hold on. Is that any better? All right, anyways, that's it for this video. We showed how we, I made these two ejectors. Sorry, I'm tall, I gotta stand back. But we've got four tap holes in metric, then three in normal inch size. Once again, these fit very nicely, very happy with this. So this is just one of those first parts. I had the material on hand. Once again, this is kind of a rush job. I don't know when these videos are gonna be posted, but either way, this part had to get made and it is done. We got two of them. We got one in the machine I gotta take out and clean off. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.